Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mr. Kadam and today we are actually going to look at behind the scenes of a powerful approach called intelligent experience processing. It's a new terminology. So since this is a continued episode of an agentic process automation, let's create an agent which is based on a whole new approach of how do we automate the applications, right? Or you can call it as intelligent experience processing. Now this IEP, it's actually one of the short term, which is now, again, it's one of the trendy term, right? So in this scenario, we have a workflow that automatically reads incoming emails related to movie ticket reimbursement. And whenever an email arrives with a specific subject, the robot takes over the streamlined entire process, downloads the attachment, extracts the key data, and decides whether the reimbursement is valid or no. Now you might be wondering, what is exactly intelligent experience processing? Well, IEP is all about combining AI-based document understanding, advanced language models, context-driven decision makings to handle end-to-end -end process seamlessly. Instead of just capturing the data, we will actually make sure that every step is doing the validation, approval, or rejection. Now, this all happens with minimal human intervention, and that's why it's an entire guided experience by robust rules and logics. Now you don't have to do the critical complex post-processing logics after the invoice process extraction. We are going to simplify it even way too further. So let's look at the high level explanation of the workflow. Okay. First of all, uh, I have built a UI path studio cloud based robot, which is, uh, which is based on the cloud studio platform. Now I have created a trigger. Now trigger is based on the email reception. Now I have two conditions here, whether if my email subject contains invoice and if it's sender, sender is from digital NISAC where I, I have two email IDs. So I'll, I'll be sending from one of the emails, right? Now, as soon as this trigger runs, if it finds any email in a specific folder, right? With that specific message, then what it does, it will download all the attached invoices. Okay. Now it downloads all the invoices. And uh, once it downloads the invoices, we will go in a for each loop for each attachment. We will basically use UiPath's DocPath LLM model, which is UiPath's document understanding. Now, first part is done. First and foremost, what we did, we used UiPath's robot to monitor the mailbox as a trigger. It seems with a specific subject, which says, let's say, invoice, and then we download the attachments. Now, the document understanding is used that these attached documents, when they extract the data from the documents, UiPath's document understanding powered by DocPath LLM will extract the data essential details like invoice number, total amount, tax components, all the details, right? And based on all these details extracted, we will take a decision later. So this extract data from invoices is working on DocPath LLM model behind the scenes, which is as what we said earlier, right? We are looking at intelligent experience processing. So this is basically doing the AI based document understanding part. Now let's look at the third component. So once I get the data, our output will be stored in the extracted data. What we will do is from the extracted data, we will take out only the metadata because we want the entire data, absolute data from this data extraction, right? I will break the loop because I just want one attachment to be extracted. So I'll just bring the forage loop uh, as of now. Then we'll print the metadata which we extracted from the document. And this metadata I will directly provide to the agent. Now this agent is invoked as an activity within my UiPath workflow. Now this is another way of using agents. Now remember when Throughout our last five episodes of this series, we have used agent with autopilot or maybe directly within the agent builder platform or executed as a process, right? But this time we are going to invoke agent as an activity while we are going through a workflow of UiPath, which is totally different approach, right? Now let's look at this. This activity actually allows me to select the folder agent and allow me to add the data. Now what I have done here is I have added the data that what we wanted, right? We wanted the data to be coming from, so let's look at the data. So data is coming basically from the metadata, right? Now this metadata, which we are getting from the extracted document, we are passing it to the agent and then agent will respond to us based on issue type, expected value, confidence value, found value and approved or rejected. Now the extracted data basically goes to agent, which acts as like a mini AI decision engine. It uses a system prompt. It uses context grounding and a rule book to decide whether invoice is valid as per it is pricing. The venue does, does the venue match? Does the approved tax correctly calculated? 
or is everything checks out perfectly whether to approve or reject the invoice and if reject then flag based on what is the issue what was the expected value what is the confidence value and what is the found value now let's go to the agent right so here's our agent so we built an agent called intelligent experience processing okay now this iep agent I have given a description here. So I have a complete data here of my agent, right? So agent's name is intelligent experience processing, description, context surrounding description. So I'll come to this part, but yeah, description of the agent is this. So this is the AI driven intelligent experience processing ensures accurate invoice validation. So I just gave a description here to my agent, right? Then let's write a system prompt. Now system prompt, as you remember in our previous video, we saw that what are the rules to write the system prompt properly, right? We will follow those rules and we will design system prompt based on that. Now let's go back here and look at the system prompt. So this is our system prompt. Goal is to ensure accurate validation of movie tickets invoices by checking compliance with pricing, venue, showtime, payment details, GST regulations, etc. Then there is role. Then there is agent's identity, movie ticket invoice validator version one, context rounding and validation logic, behavior we have mentioned here that always validate ticket price, ensure venue is authorized, check, showtime is valid, verify payment details are there, validate the GST, provide a detailed validation summary and approve the invoice that fully comply with the validation criteria. And then the error handling rules we have given is that if the ticket price is incorrect, flag it. If the venue is unauthorized, flag it. If the show time falls out of the allowed range of the time, flag it. If the payment details are missing or incorrect, flag it. If the GST information is missing, flag it. And if the invoice contains manual edits or altered transaction details, flag it. Okay. And compliance reporting and all this data. Now, User prompt is simple. Complex reporting also we have few here that what we exactly want to extract and validate, right? And then the user prompt is simple, just the invoice text, right? The whole text which we extracted as a metadata. Now let's look at the documents. So, <clears throat> so this is these are the documents, okay? And this is the rule book. The rule book is pretty simple. Rule book is defined based on invoice approval criteria. So we have given approval criteria that if the ticket price range is as per below, like standard seats approved is forty to hundred rupees. VIP seats approved to 150 to 300 rupees. IMAX 3D 250 to 500 rupees. Then venue of the showtime. I have mentioned showtime must be between 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. Not beyond that. Payment and transaction validations is uh, it, it is valid either. Uh, you know it, it has exact match with the amount. And then GST compliance as I have mentioned like 9% of GST is still okay. 9% to 18% right. Then for discard of invoice. I have decided that if the pricing error is there if the price falls out of the given range then discard it if the venue is not authorized discard it if the show violates the time discard it if the payment discrepancy is there in the miss invoice and the appro and the email discard it missing information discard it gst failure discard it possible frauds if any sign of manual edit or altered figures discard it right and then compliance reporting we have mentioned here also now we have also given a small idea about why this rule books works for the use case Saying that scalable and generic handle partial payments and clear pass or fail logics, right? Just to give an idea to the robot. Now these are our invoices. So I have a couple of movie tickets here from past, right? Let's say this is for uh, one of the South Indian movie, and there is this price ticket, taxable amount, and total amount here, right? Then there is sorry, this closes. Then there is another movie ticket. Then there is another movie ticket for one of the movies, right? And then there is one more movie here. So I have four tickets, and I have designed two emails to process and let's see how this agent actually works. Okay. So I have a sample data here in my agent. I have selected Anthropic Cloudy as a model. Okay. Now to create this context grounding based on the rule book, what we have done in the context here, we have added a new context. Okay. So you can click on add context and you can add it from here. We have added a context from autopilot folder. Now this context, where does it sit? Let's go to the context first. So what you have to do is whenever you create a rule book, you have to basically in your autopilot folder in the storage bucket, you have to create one of the storage buckets. This you might have already seen if you're following the series of agent process automation, but if not, just look at it, right? So I created a new storage bucket invoice approval rules. I uploaded this movie PDF, which we just saw here, right? This movie PDF rule book here as a, as a knowledge base. Now, once you define the knowledge base, all you have to do is go back to your admin. On the admin page on the platform, you have to go to the AI trust layer, context rounding, and here you have to select the folder where you have uploaded the storage bucket. Here, create a new index, just like I have created here. And in that index, you can basically just go ahead and just give an index name, storage bucket, select the folder, which folder you're actually looking at, 
and which storage bucket you're looking at, right? And then you can decide what is the file type that you want to select. And then you can create an index. And once you upload any document to index, just once created, just sync now. It automatically syncs though for the first time, but yeah, you can just sync it like that, right? Done. Now, once you have created a context grounding here as an index, then you see there's a maximum of 10 indexes allowed. So I have created six index out of 10, right? So then you go back to your agent, you add your index here, and then given the index, the description I have provided as an invoice text, which is the argument. And then the folder is autopilot index is this. I have given a relevance score of 0.3 and maximum result generated to three. And for the Anthropic Cloudy, I have selected my max tokens to 4,000 and precision is 0.5, just to make sure that, you know, I still want a proper fair understanding of the data. Then if you want to look at the arguments, which I have created, I have created one argument for the input, which is invoice text and output. We have five arguments like issue type, expected value, confidence value, found value, approval, all this data, right? As a output argument. In input, we are passing directly the entire metadata. Okay. Now this is the entire agent, what we have built, right? And here's the user prompt. The user prompt has to be exactly same name as what is your argument of input, right? Now let's provide an input here. So this is one of the data extracted metadata of one of the invoice. You see when it runs, Anthropic Cloudy understands that it has to get data from the context. So it will run the context first. So you see it executed the context routing first. It found one answer. So it based on the answer, it actually gave output. And then the execution output is invoice approved. There is no issue. Expected value is perfect. Found value is perfect. Confidence value is high. So this is how we are expecting the output. Now, once we get this output here, what we will do is we will print it just to see what is printed. And then based on, now this is, we are back into UiPath studio workflow, right? And based on the approval status, if it's approved, we will simply send an approval email and move this email to processed folder. So we don't have the email anymore in the inbox. And then if the email is approved, we will add one more <coughs> agent later on, which will immediately go ahead and in our portal where we can create reimbursement tickets, it will go and it will create a reimbursement ticket in that reimbursement portal. So we will have multi agents, right? Now this whole experience, what we just saw is called as an intelligent experience processing. Now, finally, based on the agents output that what you saw, right? An automatic email will be sent to all the employees. I mean, the employee which has, uh, you know, uploaded that document, right? For approval or rejection. Now, what are the benefits? Correct. Like the big deal about this. What is the big deal about this? Why it is super, uh, you know, important to learn about intelligent experience processing. I have created very high level though, but yeah, why it is important. First of all, it is efficient. Second of all, it is accurate. So what we do is we reduce the tedious manual checks, minimum errors, standardize the entire operation. And the result is super frictionless experience, which is called as truly intelligent experience processing. So that's, that's the robot. Okay. Now let's go and let's send an email. So I have two draft emails. Let's say one of the uh, movie ticket I attached it. I said that this is invoice for the company. Uh, let's say outing, sorry. Invoice for the company outing. Okay. Now let's see. Hi, HR bot, please approve the attached invoice for the movie with the team, right? Now let's see what it does. So send an email. Email is sent. Let's come here. It should land in our email inbox in autopilot testing. Okay. Okay. We got the mail. Now let's go and let's run the robot. So let's test on cloud. <clears throat> now it's running the first part, which is checking if the email is there. It found the email. Now it is downloading it. It found the data. Now it is going to for each email attachment, download it from the email. It extracted the data. Now this is the metadata. Okay. The metadata, which is extracted from the invoice, the whole metadata is here. Okay. You see invoice number is one, three, six, eight, right? What we sent. Let's check the invoice number here. Is it 1368? Yes, it is 1368, right? This is the exact invoice number, which is extracted. As you can see here, we got this data extracted, right? Now let's run the agent and let's see what agent has to say. So agent executed successfully and the robot has been processed and everything's done successfully. So what happened here? Let's look at the agent's output. So agent says that all criteria met 
all criteria met confidence is high and invoice is approved now since invoice is approved you see the approved email has been sent now let's go here uh, this email now will be moved to a different folder okay so let's refresh and let's see you see autopilot replied email so it went to this folder now and here we must have received a new email inbox okay let's go to the inbox and open this one you see invoice has been approved for reimbursement and uh, invoice has been approved with all this data what you can see that they extracted by the ixp right so based on extracted data from ixp agent let's go to draft again and let's send the another email which we have and let's send this email okay so email is sent <clears throat> and the first email which we had let's move it out of here refresh now let's wait for this email to land in okay by the way while we are running here right we can see the we can see the traces in agent as well. We will show you later. Now, once this is done, uh, we got another email, right? Now let's run the robot again. Let's test on cloud. Now it's running again, uh, extracting and checking if there's new new email arrived in the folder. Yes, it got the email and it's going for the downloading attachments. Now the data will be extracted. You see, now data extraction is running using the DocPath LLM model. Data is extracted. As you can see, the data is here. Let's look at the invoice. So invoice number is ending with 8052. Let's look at it. Is it 8052? 8052, right? Correct. This is the invoice, right? 702 total payment. Let's look at it. The, the data is correct, right? GST 107 total amount 702, right? All the data is here. Now it's pending for agent. So let's resume the agent. Now agent will extract the data. And you see invoice is discarded, right? This time. So one invoice previously was approved. Now this invoice is discarded. So let's go below and then you see, so based on the condition, it discarded the email, uh, the invoice, and now it is sent a rejection email to the user with the appropriate details. Let's go and let's look at that. So we got an email with rejection. Let's see what is the email. Hi, invoice has been rejected for reimbursement based on the extracted information from IXP agent as follows. The found data is 6652. Expected data is 702, confidence value is high and invoice has been discarded, right? So based on this, now we saw that we actually simplified the whole experience of the invoice approval and rejection based on the robot. Now here we have integration of multiple things and I hope I was able to actually show you all the components together, how they work together. So that's my demo, right? If you find this helpful, if you're excited about building your own intelligent experience process and workflow just like this, right? Subscribe for more deep dives into automation and AI. And let me know in the comment section how you actually envision leveraging intelligent experience processing in your organization. Thank you so much for watching uh, and happy automation.